Although on the West Bank same-sex acts were decriminalized already in 1951, in the Gaza Strip male homosexuality is illegal till today. The situation in the region is very complicated and it will not change soon, including the situation of LGBT people. I was born only five years after Martina came out. In Israel, discrimination based on sexual orientation has been illegal since 1992. In the Palestinian territories, LGBT individuals regularly flee to Israel to escape persecution from their families, society and the law. al Kaos, the first official Palestinian LGBTQ organization, was founded in 2001. I live in Palestine and I feel that I'm more attracted to boys than to girls. 93% of Palestinians are still against homosexuality. I live in Norway for five years already. In 2010, I've been forced to leave my country and request asylum in Norway as a UN refugee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome activist and Norwegian Gay of the Year 2013, Abdul Ravashta. Good evening, everybody. I hate giving speech in English. I don't like giving speech. I like to do things in the streets. I'm Abdul Rawashta, or Abdul. Real name is Abdullah, which means in Arabic, God's slave. But I'm not. <laughs> Born the 15th of December of 1986. I'm not gay, I'm not straight, I'm not prime minister, I'm not businessman, I'm just myself. I born this feeling, I born this way. So I never described myself gay or straight or whatever. I'm not an activist at all. I'm just like born, I found myself like that. That was when I was two hours old. <laughs> and then grow up in a very conservative, religious, poor society, poor family, almost <clears throat> struggling to have enough food home. Very sad, um, difficult life to the sense too. Never wanted to come out of the closet. I never wanted to stand here and talk to you guys. I just had a normal life like the rest of the world. I just wanted to be normal, just myself. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that in, in, in at least in the Arab world and in the Middle East. So 2010, I had good life, I had a boyfriend, I had a job, everything was perfect, except the occupation, everybody knows about the conflict and what's going on in Palestine. But I always had a good life at least for every poor, simple farmer like me. Just had a boyfriend, small job, everything was perfect. And suddenly my boyfriend were, was drunk, was going in the street in the city of Ramallah. We moved out from Hebron, I born and grown up in Hebron, the south of the occupied Palestine, Southwest Bank. So in 2008, I moved to, to Ramallah. It's a bigger city um, with um, a lot of um, strategies to offer in life. So we moved out there. My boyfriend from Nablus, we met together, we lived together, we had good life, job, everything was perfect. And suddenly he was drunk. They stopped him in the street, the police. You're drunk, blah, 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 arrested him, get him to the police station, took his phone, iPad, found everything. <clears throat> then they got to my place, arrested me, two o'clock in the middle of night, and started the investigation. First question was, are you cooperating with the CIA? I said, yeah, sure, I am. And then the CIA, the Israeli intelligence police, and I said, no, I have nothing to do with them because I have been in jail in Israel for being Palestinian activists against occupation, demonstrating against the apartheid wall and all this stuff. Well, we don't believe you. In the Palestinian law, nothing against homosexuality, but the cops who arrested me wanted to punish me in their way. So I refused to sign on the report that saying that I'm cooperating with the CIA and the Israeli Mossad. Then five in the morning after all this torturing and beating and 15, 16 hours, 
They called my father in the morning. He was on his way to the mosque to pray. And then they told him that, you know what, we found out that your son is gay. And that was the worst moment in my life because my father was going around in town carrying a pistol and he wanted to kill me. <clears throat> and that's why I am in Norway today. I never wanted to go, I never wanted to move. This picture in 2010, last day I spent in the Holy Land, it was in Tel Aviv. After I got out from jail and all the corruption and money and everything, I, in a way, I managed to get to Tel Aviv and then the Norwegian embassy with cooperation with the UNHCR office in Tel Aviv got me to Norway. So it was the most sad day in my life. Every time I looked at this picture, I cry because just sit on the beach and just thinking that I'm leaving my home that I never wanted to leave. I didn't done anything. It's, it's just me. Then I've been forced to move out. I moved out. But I never gave up, you know. I was almost killed, but I never gave up. Then I come to Norway, my lovely new home, which I have a lot of love to Norway. They saved my life. They gave me new opportunities, a new life. And here I found, totally different. But I love Norway. I would defend Norway from like whatever is going to happen. I would be the first voluntary soldier on the border to defend Norway. But still lovely. We never experienced like that in, in the Middle East. And here in 2013, I won the prize of the Gay of the Year of Norway. Because of my activism, I was halal. Well, I used to be halal a long time ago. So Wilma since we had a project that called Kosher for Jewish gays and LGBT and halal for Muslims and you know the rest of that and since I never really wanted to to be an activist, but the conditions, the society, the the family, I lost the contact with families for like three, four years after I moved out. And I just got back to visit them now in June, this June. Five years. They still don't accept me, they don't like the way that I'm living. But I think they love me, they will never hate me because I'm their son. But the thing is that the society and the occupation and all the conditions that the Palestinian people living under, all this, this like pressure that the people living under is, doesn't give them the opportunity to start thinking about new things like homosexuality or, you know, People themselves don't have basic human rights because they live under occupation. It's apartheid, checkpoints, wall, army, military. There's no life. There's no basic human rights for them. So they don't, they don't have these provinces to, to think about other rights while people themselves don't have their basic human rights. And that's where my struggle, uh, my, sorry, my, um, my struggle starts actually to work for Palestine first, to liberate the Palestinian people from the occupation and from the apartheid and to build up a new society who can accept me and accept the others like me. But then we don't have the chance in Palestine to work for us because we can do nothing with the occupation. We're trying very hard, but the world is still sleeping. But I think we start something else in Jordan, in the Arab world. I think Jordan is one of the best Arab countries to start building a gay community, apprentices with respect, dignity, and rights. I spent seven months when I escaped from jail, from the West Bank, from uh, the occupied territories. First time when it happens with me in January 2010, and I got out of jail, I went to Jordan. It's the closest country of, of Palestine. It's the only country that we can cross the borders uh, legally without uh, visa or uh, permissions. Then I went to Amman, I stayed there for a couple of months. I met the owner of the only gay bar there called Buxat Cafe in Amman. It's very famous in the world. If you go to Jordan, you would buy uh, the guidebook of Jordan. It says Buxat Cafe, the only gay bar in, 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 in Jordan. So he gave me work, money, supported me. He's a Palestinian-American business, businessman. Um, 
And from there we start actually our community that we are building up today, and it's a huge one today. I've been to Egypt, I've been to Tunisia, Jordan, Palestine, many Arab countries. We have tendencies, a lot of activities. Uh, unfortunately, the media doesn't agree, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, show us that much in media in the Arab world because of the situation, but we have uh, basic eclipses that we're building up on. So hopefully in the sooner future, we're gonna start a new pride in Amman. Marching, we never, we never even, we never thought about hanging a rainbow flag, walking in Palestine or Jordan, Morocco or Egypt or Libya or Saudi Arabia or Dubai. But hopefully, in the future, we will do that. I don't know what to say anymore. Since I don't think I have more pictures, but the video clip I'm going to show you more, guys. Thank you for inviting me here. I have, still have six minutes, so I'm going to talk for two minutes. I don't like to talk, so. but the video will explain everything. Um, um, I'm a political activist and I'm human activist, not a gay activist, because we're human, all of us, we're born with that. So I don't like the description of being gay or straight or whatever, because we're born with that, which is it. All of us have equal rights. But the liberation is connected to each other. That's what always I said. We need to liberate the people minds to liberate the list of sins. So the liberation is connected. All kind of liberation is connected to each other. So don't, don't start in a side and leave the other side. Just never give up and keep fight. Thank you. I just wanna dance. I 